Welcome to the Daily Dare. Your body has an alarm system. You may have heard this alarm system called the fight or flight response. It's a normal part of your body that everyone has. You've a digestive system, a cardiovascular system, a nervous system, and you have an alarm system. The purpose of this alarm system is to sense when there is danger in the environment and then cue you to respond. For example, If you're walking through the woods and a bear steps in your path, your alarm system will sense the danger and respond by pumping adrenaline into your body. The adrenaline readies your body to either fight or run away from the threat. This is an adaptive response that is designed to keep you safe. Unfortunately, sometimes this alarm system isn't entirely accurate. Your body also initiates this alarm system when you perceive something in your environment as dangerous that isn't really dangerous. For example, maybe you find yourself in a social situation that makes you feel really uncomfortable. Even though this situation isn't dangerous, your body perceives the situation as unsafe, as you might suffer the emotional pain of rejection. This fear can send your body into fight or flight mode. Your body releases adrenaline and your heart beats faster, your chest feels tight and a panic attack starts to take over. In other words, you can think of a panic attack as a type of false alarm. Panic attacks happen when you perceive something in your environment as dangerous that triggers your fight or flight response. Your body can't always differentiate between real danger and perceived danger. To figure out if something is dangerous, your body pays attention to your response. If you act as though you are safe, it doesn't cue the alarm. If you act as though you're in danger, it immediately cues the alarm whether the danger is real or not. As Michelle Kavni in our coaching group likes to say, think about the fire alarm in your house. It rings in exactly the same way when your house is burning to the ground or when you burn cookies in the oven. No matter what causes the smoke, the alarm is going to go off. To the alarm, smoke indicates danger, no matter where the smoke comes from. Just like the alarm in your house is triggered by smoke, the alarm in your body is triggered when you fight anxious discomfort. Anxious discomfort might be a tight chest or a dizzy sensation. As long as you fight discomfort, you keep ringing your own alarm system. You keep setting off the fight-or-flight response over and over again, which manifests in the form of a panic attack. If panic attacks happen when you fight discomfort, this means that to stop panic attacks, you'll need to stop resisting. Resisting happens when you constantly worry about having a panic attack. It happens when you push against thoughts and sensations of a panic attack and try to make them go away. When you fight back in this way, you're basically telling the alarm, help, I'm in danger here. Your alarm hears your cry for help and releases more adrenaline. You then get anxious about being anxious, which causes you to get stuck in an anxious loop. To overcome panic attacks, you don't need to avoid setting off the alarm system completely. Instead, all you need to do is acknowledge when the alarm system is ringing. You choose a new and better response. You choose not to react with fear or resistance. You may not like the ringing, but you can choose to sit in the discomfort and just let it happen. The key is to let time pass while accepting each and every anxious thought and sensation you feel. As time passes, the alarm will eventually turn itself off. While the alarm keeps ringing, just keep telling yourself, Oh well, that's just a thought I'm having, or it's a weird bodily sensation. Who cares, it's not something to be afraid of. It's unpleasant, but I can absolutely handle it. It can be difficult to remember what to do in the moment of panic. To help you with this process, write out a list of thoughts and sensations you feel when your panic alarm does go off. For each item on your list, write down a sentence expressing the fact that you accept and allow that thought or sensation. For example, 
I accept and allow my tight chest. I accept and allow feeling out of control. I accept and allow a pounding heart. And so on. The next time you feel a panic attack, remind yourself that you accept and allow every single thought and sensation without resistance. Eventually, your alarm will shut itself off and you'll be able to go on with your day. Well done. You've completed the first part of your daily dare. Now let's do a short guided visualization to help you feel more empowered and centered within yourself. So closing your eyes and sitting or lying down, take a deep breath in. Hold and release. And again, breathing in. Hold and release. Feel the weight of your body pressing down. Notice the different points of contact. Notice any sounds around you. And allow yourself to gently come into the present moment. I want you to picture your anxiety as a funny cartoon character. Picture it vividly. Is it big or tiny? Has it got fur or feathers? And what color is it? Give your anxiety character a funny, squeaky voice and make it as ridiculous as possible. I want you to now think back to the last time you felt really anxious. And imagine your little anxiety character standing there next to you, telling you about all the bad things that might happen. So it's just you and your anxiety monster in your mind's eye together. And see yourself getting scared and trying to run away from this anxiety character as it chases after you. But now, let's turn things around in your imagination. I want you to imagine yourself slowly stopping and turning around and looking this little character right in the eye as you say to it. Now it's time to turn the tables. Now I'll be chasing you. This is going to be fun. Imagine the confused look on your character's face as you start chasing it. You're now having fun chasing it and repeat over and over to yourself, I'm excited by this feeling. Give me more. I'm excited by this feeling. Give me more. As you shout after your anxiety character. Tell it that it better run much faster if it doesn't want to get caught. So for the next short moment, stay with this visualization. And 
and notice how it feels in your body for you to be doing the chasing. Does it feel good to be chasing boldly after your anxiety? To feel brave and in control? To in essence turn the hunted into the hunter? You can keep chasing the anxiety in your mind's eye for the rest of the day until you get so comfortable with the idea that you almost lose interest in it. And with practice, your mind will automatically recall this visual image and the corresponding feeling of empowerment whenever anxiety shows up trying to scare you. Let's finish this exercise with a deep breath in. Hold and release. And again, breathing in. Hold and release. And now, as I count down from five, I want you to really let go of any stress or tension that you're holding on to. And gently relax into the awareness that you, in fact, are your own safe person. And that in this very moment, you're totally looked after and cared for. So relaxing into that awareness now in five, four, three, two, one. Well done. You've completed your daily dare.